Hey guys, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. Today I'm going to discuss a lot of interesting questions which can be of use for your RBI SEBI NABARD examination. So let's quickly begin with the video. But before that, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, then do subscribe and hit this bell notification. And also you can join this Telegram group. The link of this group is in description below. So here is our first question. How many countries are a part of UNCDF's Agri Tech Challenge 2021? 7, 10, 21, 15 and 5 are in the options out of which 7 is the right answer. So 4 countries from Africa and 3 countries from Asia have been selected under this Agri-Tech Agri Challenge. Now from here only one question is emerging that this Agri-Tech Challenge is focusing on which continent. So it is focusing on Africa and Asia. And even in those continent, it is focusing on four countries in Africa and three countries in Asia. You will get to know the names of those countries, so don't worry about it. But let's first understand why this AgriTech challenge has been uh, launched by UNCDF. So basically, AgriTech, in order to promote technology in the agriculture sector, in order to solve the emerging problems of the small farmers or the farmers in these countries, this challenge has been launched. And obviously it is a challenge. So it is basically a contest wherein the innovators, the startups would be presenting innovative ideas. And for developing those innovative ideas, they will get support from UNCDF. Okay, so that is the whole crux of this UNCDF AgriTech challenge, basically United Nations AgriTech challenge 2021 now let us understand it in a bit detail for your upcoming examination so i have told you that it is going to target smallholder farmers in asia and africa now this un capital development fund is partnering with these organizations uh, atal innovation fund Atal Innovation Mission, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Rabo Foundation, International Fund for Agriculture Development and Bayer. So remember all the partner organizations for this mission or this challenge. And the purpose is to scale up agri-tech and agri-fintech innovators in the selected countries. Now which countries are selected in this challenge? So from Asia, Indo India, Indonesia and Malaysia, from Africa, Kenya, Malawi, Uganda and Zambia have been selected under this challenge 20 startups will be selected for finding solutions to the problems of low productivity climate risk and insufficient supply chains so these are the three concern areas through under which these startups or the innovators will have to innovate solutions okay so remember these three uh, topics these three concern areas because these are the broader themes under which the uh, innovative solutions will be built Next is that how the innovators will get support from UNCDF because if they want to innovate, they need support. And what kind of support will they get? They will get support in terms of market linkages, investor and mentorship. Basically, access to investors and mentorship will also be provided to the selected startups under this AgriTech challenge. So that was all about this challenge. I hope there is nothing uh, that you could not understand in this challenge. But if there is something that you are not able to understand, then you can ask me in the comment section below. Moving on to the next question, which has become the first country in the world to approve commercial production of genetically modified golden rice Singapore, Philippines, Gambia, Indonesia, and New Zealand. These are the five countries out of which Philippines is the right answer. So here, this genetically modified golden rice, what is the benefit of this golden rice or what is the advantage of this golden, golden rice over the normal rice? So this golden rice contains beta carotene, which is basically vitamin A for the human body. So human body converts this beta carotene into uh, vitamin A, which is very good for our eyesight and immune system also. Now, uh, does the ordinary rice not contain the beta carotene? Ordinary rice, uh, you can say the plant of the ordinary rice also contains the beta carotene, but 
the grain the actual rice that we consume does not contain this element the, does not contain this beta carotene uh, element which is needed by the body and philippines is a country which is suffering which is combating the problem of childhood blindness and therefore in order to combat this problem they have developed this golden rice which is rich with vitamin a with beta carotene that is why it is very important for your exam from your exam point of view remember the element that it contains and the ordinary rice does not now why is it named as golden rice the reason behind this is that the presence of this beta carotene gives the yellow color to this rice so bright yellow color is given to the rice therefore it is called golden rice now philippines has developed this rice in partnership with international rice research institute you have to tell me that where is this institute located international rice research institute and for this question that was all now we are moving on to the next question which country is developing world's first waterless molten salt reactor japan italy Germany, Russia, China are in the options. Out of which China is the right answer. So it is developing it in its. So Hubei is the desert is basically a city in China which is a desert. So here this world's first waterless molten salt reactor is being developed. This is also known as world's first clean nuclear reactor. Why is it called? clean nuclear reactor you will understand this thing when you know what is put inside this nuclear reactor in order to generate electricity so basically thorium is the element that is mixed with liquid fluoride salt in order to uh, get in order to uh, make the molten salt and this molten salt is put inside the nuclear reactor and it helps in nuclear fission and thus it helps in creating energy so basically this becomes the fuel for nuclear reactor now this thorium basically this thorium is first of all it is abundantly available in comparison to uranium the second thing here is which makes it eco friendly as well is that it does not need water to cool down it can cool down when it comes in contact with air that is the very first reason for which it is the clean nuclear reactor because because it is saving our water the precious water is being saved through this nuclear technology okay wherein air is cooling down the nuclear reactor now the second point here is that the chances of leakage are less in this thorium based nuclear reactor because when the thorium based this molten salt comes in contact with air it quickly cools down and solidifies therefore it is reducing the risk of leakage and thus it is very eco friendly for the human beings and for the nature itself so that is why it is important it is world's first waterless molten salt reactor that is being developed by china guys do you know which country produces the highest not produces basically which country has the highest or largest reserves of thorium the answer here is india because india is expected to have is estimated to have 3.5 to 8.5 million tons of thorium present in india but still we don't have this technology of converting the thorium into molten salt and then using it into the nuclear reactors therefore we cannot tap this potential of ours and at present this is the estimated guys remember this is the estimated reserve we haven't calculated the total reserves that we have of thorium but australia has done so so at present it is australia that has the largest thorium reserves in the world okay around 4 point something metric ton, uh, tons 
million tons. Okay, so that was all about this world's first molten salt reactor, nuclear reactor. Now let's move on to the next question. Where is this cellar tunnel located? Himachal Pradesh, Arunachal Pradesh, Jammu Kashmir, Bihar and Punjab are in the options. The right answer here is Arunachal Pradesh. The cellar tunnel is being developed in Arunachal Pradesh by Border Roads Organization since the year 2019. So it is not a new uh, tunnel that is being inaugurated or something like that is not happening. The reason behind this is uh, this being in the news is that recently the construction work of this cellar tunnel uh, was in the news because a blast was made at this escape tunnel so that the construction can be fast paced. That is something that we can completely ignore. But what we cannot ignore is that this cellar tunnel is being developed in Arunachal Pradesh. So that was all about this uh, news. Between which two countries does the Bay of Biscay lie? Denmark, Norway, France, Spain, UK, France, Italy and Germany, Sweden and Finland. So the right answer here is France and Spain. Why is it in the news? Because Indian Navy and French Navy conducted a bilateral passage exercise in this Bay of Biscay. Okay, so that is why it is in the news. So you need to know that between which countries does this Bay of Biscay lie. So that was all about this question and for today's video. Thank you so much for watching the video. Do not forget to watch me at 10 a.m. because I am coming with the May Spotlight Part 2. Thank you so much.